Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So um, today I want to talk about Luna. What exactly happened? How would you have made sure you don't lose, lose money, right? Because a friend of mine told me that he bought Luna when it got when it got down to eight, ten dollars, and then he lost everything. So how would you have invested rightly so as so as not to lose, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Well, first of all, let's find out how come no one saw this coming. Well, someone saw it coming. But the person that saw it coming is someone that, you know, people don't really talk about much in the space. But let's just look through it. So this guy made a post. He said, it seems that Dan Larima has concerns about when USD starts falling, it will eventually lead to a hyperinflationary collapse of Luna. Anyone likes inflation, right? We all agree, right? So it seems he doesn't believe the Terra ecosystem is sustainable. Do you have a response to EOS Mastermind? So the guy Dan Larima is a guy that created EOS, and we're going to get into his profile real soon. So Dan Larima created EOS, and Dan Larima is saying that the UST technology isn't good enough, right? So that is um. So let's just look at the comment. Hey Dan, something. Uh, Dan said all he had to say back then, economics, rest over, blah, 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 blah. Um, and of course, people tried to laugh at him. He said Dan Larima from EOS. People had to laugh at him and, you know, a lot of people laughed at the statement because it was coming from Dan Larima. I'm going to tell you who Dan Larima is shortly. And then, Duquan, who is the guy behind um, Luna and USC, actually had this to say, he said, now he's talking to Dalarima. Dalarima's Twitter uh, username is ByteMaster. So he said, uh, ByteMaster, I know you are job searching right now, RON right now. So just letting you know, we have internship positions open at Terraform Labs. Terraform Labs. All jokes aside, happy to answer, you know, he actually mocked the guy, you know, mocked Dalarima. Right. Uh, um, and of course, you know, lots of people laughed uh, about them, you know. Anyways, so what Dalarima said was the way Luna is 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 designed because here's how Luna works. In case you are not familiar, so it, Luna has a uh, a stable cryptocurrency that is stuck to it. So if you born now, listen carefully. If you have hundred Luna right that means and okay let, let's let's just use a chart because i was working on it uh, i was teaching some people so i had to use the same thing so assuming assuming the price of assuming the price of one luna is hundred dollars and then you had hundred luna that means you have what one thousand dollars what of luna now the way luna works you have to, if you burn luna you get ust which is a stable coin that is pegged to one dollar right so if you have one ten thousand dollars worth of luna that means you can mint out ten thousand watts of usd now let me ask a question if the price of one luna of one luna is hundred dollars and you have ten thousand usd and you burn it to get one ten thousand dollars worth of usd what to now happen? you remember usd is a stable coin what to now happen if the price of luna goes down and then you burn UST because you can burn UST to get Luna. If the price of UST goes down to five dollar, assuming that means by the time you burn your ten thousand dollars worth of Luna of UST, you're going to get two thousand worth of Luna because it's not be ten thousand dollars divided by by the price of one Luna. It will give you this. I've done the division already. So ten thousand dollars divided by the price of Luna will give you. 2000 so as the price of luna keeps going down and usd is at one dollar it will not cost cost hyper inflation for luna and because luna is the one that is giving is the coin that is giving life to usd as long as this guy is having hyper inflation people will run away from it because people don't like hyper inflation so as people are running away from this this guy will be looking for who, who um is a, a secondary or a primary currency to back it up so that it remains at one dollar now remember we burn this to make this 
Now, but if this one is having hyperinflation, people will be running away from it. And this guy is, a, is the major reason why this guy is at $1. Now, for them, for the lunar ecosystem to make sure that this price still remains at $1, what they did was to buy thousands of Bitcoin. I can't remember the exact amount, but I know it's over forty to 50,000 Bitcoin. So they bought a, 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 a boatload of Bitcoin in order to further back Bitcoin and AVAX in order to further back USD. Now, guess what happened? Now, malicious people, attackers now notice that, hey, these guys have a lot of Bitcoin. And for these guys, for the USD to remain at $1, they need to keep burning Luna. And Luna is steadily falling in price and having hyperinflation. So that means their next move will be to do what? To start selling their Bitcoin to back up this guy. Guess what the attacker did? The attacker bought about three hundred million dollars. I can't. I don't know. The, I can't remember the exact figure, but I know it's, it's about three hundred million dollars of UST. And started dumping the UST. Now remember, if they are dumping the UST, the hyperinflation here will increase by hundreds of percentage. And as the hyperinflation is increasing, people are running away from Luna. Guess what the attacker did? He bought and was dumping this and also had a short position in bitcoin so what is a short position now if you're a trader of course you even though you're not a trader just a listener you get it so if you in trading if you buy here and sell here it's called longing you make profits if you also buy here and sell here you make profits it is called shorting right in case you didn't get that take the video back a little bit and then you'll get it but in trading terms if you it's called selling and buying, buying and selling. So you make profit upward, up, when you make profit upwards, it's called buying or longing. So you make profits downwards, it's called selling or shorting. But if you don't understand that, <laughs> we have a trading course here. Um, you can enroll in that trading course and get all that. So back to our chat. So what, what the attacker did was to place a short position before they started selling their words before they started selling their UST. Because they know if they sell their UST, this Terra ecosystem will have to start selling their Bitcoin to back up this because this guy is already in trouble already because of hyperinflation. That is exactly what Dalarema was trying to say. He said, if demand for UST is greater than demand for Luna, then they have to print new UST, which is basically increasing leverage on Luna. You see, so this he now said if USC starts falling, they have to print Luna to prop it up. That's exactly what I just explained. And he also said this will eventually lead to hyperinflationary collapse of Luna. If there isn't a hyperinflationary collapse of Luna of dollar first. So what happened was the hyperinflation of Luna and not the hyperinflation of dollar. So either of them had issues. And then Dukwan had to laugh at him. But who is this Dan Larima, first of all? How, how come he noticed this way back in 2001? Is he that smart? Yes, he's that smart. So, this is Dan Larima. It's someone you hardly hear about in the crypto space, but he's one of the smartest guys in the entire crypto space. Do your research on him. And I'll tell you, now, Dan Larima is also the first person that Satoshi had to have a public quarrel with. Yes, you heard me right. The, the Satoshi that we know. Right, so he's the one that created Steemit, which, which is the first ever blockchain based social media. Yep. So let's let's find out how Satoshi how Dan Larima corrected Satoshi. So to do that we have to go back in time in 2010. So um so of course remember uh, what, what we saw that uh bite master is actually called dalarema so that is the that is nick that's his nickname bite master so this is bite master back in 2000 and what this is uh 2010 right before you know bitcoin even came public for anyone and by then satoshi was still around so dalarema is so smart and he's able to tell the future by just looking at the code so after dalarema looked at the code he was like hey I am convinced that bandwidth, you know, okay, he was talking about bandwidth here, right? But let me just retreat, you know, you know. Okay, no, let's not retreat because of time. All right, so let's go to the part that concerns us. So he looked at the code and looked at how 
uh, the whole transaction works. And then he asked the question, he said, besides, 10 minutes is too long to verify that payment is good. Now, in case you don't know what 10 minutes is, it's very simple. So Bitcoin block time. So 10 minutes is the amount of time it takes for a new block right, to be mined in Bitcoin. Okay, now this uh, Bitcoin block time. Our measurements show that the average time to generate the Bitcoin block is approximately it's almost nine minutes, right? It's actually ten minutes. So that is the amount of time it takes for a new block block to be created in the Bitcoin network. So what is a what is a block? Now every transaction you make in the Bitcoin or in the block, okay, let's say in, in Bitcoin um, ecosystem, the, every transaction is stored in the block, right? So that means if a block gets filled. You, the the remaining transactions will have to wait for extra for the next block to come which takes about 10 minutes and way back in 2010 dilemma was like hey this 10 minutes is way too long for payment for for me to verify that the payment is good right it needs to be as fast as swiping the credit card right so that means the the block time has to you know has to be coming the, the blocks has to be coming um every seconds because if you say it has to be as fast as swiping a, a card then it has to be coming every second and then you know he, he went on making this this statement which i don't want to start you know going through and then satoshi who is the founder of bitcoin replied and said ah you know okay now yeah he was talking about something which i don't want to start talking about right now but this is his reply as you can see, there's a quote here to, to bite master. Then there's 10 minutes beside which is this actual statement. So he said, his reply was, say this math machine, this is Satoshi now talking, replying to this same Dalarima that corrected, uh, what's his name? The, um, the, 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 the lunar guy. He said, see this math machine thread, I outline how a payment processor could verify payments well enough. Actually, really well, you know, Satoshi responded, and then he went on saying, much lower fraud rates than credit cards. In something like 10 seconds or less, if you don't now, this is the part here. This is the part here where uh, the, this, this statement actually became really famous. Now, if you take this statement and type it in Google, you see a lot of results. They say, if you don't believe me or don't get it, I don't have the time to convince you. Sorry. So let's take that statement out, copy, and put it on the search bar. As you can see, it's a popular statement already. Documenting Bitcoin, if you don't get it or don't, if you don't believe or don't get it, I don't have to. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, 10 years today, if you don't get it. So the, the famous, I said, the famous, the statement actually became famous. Top 10 insightful Satoshi quotes. See? <laughs> so the statement actually be, became very famous. But guess what? Dalaima was right. Saying the, the block time for Bitcoin is way too much. And well, he was also talking about the bandwidth, which is which is the the size of one block of, of, of Bitcoin. Right? It was so small. One I think it was one one, it one, one, one megabyte or so. Few years later, it turns out that hey, he was right. And because he's right, or, or because yeah, because he's right, you no, know, people had to start creating other blockchains. But it because Satoshi was actually too proud to listen to what, but um, should I say too proud? You know, I don't know if that's if that's the reason, but you know, the flaw that he noticed that Larima noticed was what made projects like Ethereum to come on and all thousands of other blockchains out there, or should I say hundreds of other blockchains out there. So, a few years later, Dalarima actually became wrong, and then in order to make Bitcoin transaction fast, the Bitcoin community had to create what is called uh, uh. Bitcoin Lightning Network, which is a solution to make Bitcoin, right, to have to fulfill this prophecy of being as fast as a credit card. So Bitcoin finally was not able to work this fast, but they were able to create a second solution, right? So, um, so why? How come Dalarima is so smart, but people don't know about him? Well, um, that's the story for another day. But this video just lets you know that hey, someone actually saw it coming, but it but this person is someone that people don't usually listen to in the crypto space because of some reasons what I'm gonna talk about in another video. Alright, um now the question is how would you have prevented this? Very simple. 
don't put all your eggs in one basket get someone to guide you we have a crypto course that can help you get started with, with cryptocurrency understanding cryptocurrency and how to make money with them so this take this course and you'll be able to know how to invest wisely and spread your money so as not to lose all right like the video and subscribe you'll find this really educative see ya